Hey, how you doing? We're back. Welcome back. We're here with uh, with Chris talking about what happened to the mister. Oh, <laughs> I thought I knew you. Now we okay. leave the, we leave the mister out. Okay, well, man, whose show is and, this and, anyway, and man? The mister out. Okay, he's trying to be, take over. The mister Rick. Time, That's so. right, man. Get it right. Anyway, we were talking about uh, early early years of King of the Attic, Attic me, you, and Joe. Uh, and that, that band, we did, we had some fun. Oh, we sure did. Yeah, we sure did. We had a good following. We did have a lot of fun. Had lots of fun, lots of man. Crazy. Young we and shows. stupid. Yeah, nothing stupid. It was all good. Uh, it was young and stupid for me. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, we did a lot of big shows too, like big, big stuff, right? Uh, so, um, yeah. yeah, we're the, uh, trying to think of where we went to. Yeah. So uh, we were still in the attic. Um, then the bus company was going to bunk and a bunch of stuff was going. So we kind of got uh, uh, had to move on. Yeah, I'll say the bums rush, but basically <laughs> it, it was a little kinder than that. But anyways, get out. Get, get the heck out. Find somewhere else to yeah, practice. Right. So, anyways, we moved from there, I believe, to Durham Street. That's right, okay. man. Okay, so then we had, uh, it used to be a beauty parlor, and then, uh, so basically it was an empty store in the front, and you were living in the back. Yeah, I lived in the back. It was great. It was great. So we were good. So there, there's our Litzville connection, uh, south of the tracks. The tracks were just 200 feet away from the building. We were south of the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> but the train goes by all the time at oh, that yeah. time. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. So that that was our Lidsville connection. Um, the eight cartons on the wall. Deal there with with, with, with the mice. That oh the man, it was brutal. Turned it into the song Lidsville Rats, which was kind of because of the, the mice and the rats that were eating the eight cartons that we had pasted. And we up, were in Lidsville. We were in Lidsville. We were in Lidsville. The, the Lidsville rats were a actually the the, the younger. Uh, guys that were hanging out on their bicycles at that time and they, they would ride up and they'd all park out on the, the street there because it was too small to get anybody in and we would open the doors and they'd all come in and hang around so there's where we had our Lidsville rats that's kind that's of what right. we coined for all, all, all these yeah. young guys that were uh, hanging out there on their bicycles watching us play right so so between that and the, and the mice in the wall so we kind of called it Lidsville rats so that's kind of where the, uh, the thing came from that was my inspiration for Lidsville rats anyways <laughs> And, uh, that was it. Hey man, I lived it. Oh, yeah. It was Lidsville Rats. Yeah, sleeping more mice than you could ever count. Yeah, you said me. you had to scurry and all Oh, it was insane, sleeping, they were man. Out. They were like, you'd be laying and it'd be like. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah. So fast you didn't even know what it was. Yeah. Yeah, but we got through that because, you know, we had no choice, right? Yeah, so there's our Lidsville Rats. Uh, we had our big street dance. Um, at that time, because they had the big revitalization on West Street. That was what, 1981? Somewhere there, yeah, about 81. A 81, yeah. yes. So we were kind of the, uh, the, the the revitalization of what was now turned out to be Canal Days and everything that came after that. Because yes. before that, they used to just, you know, put a couple of pylons up and block part of the street off, and, and that was, you know, years years and years before we even played there so, so if you look at they say canal days when it actually started they're counting a heck of a lot of years but canal days is is, is pretty short time frame they're counting all these crazy yeah, little yeah, bizarres exactly that went on before yeah. that or whatever yeah. but we we actually were the premiers i think of, of it really proliferating forward that it actually really turned it into something where they closed off all you know or unturned and it and, into and, something. Yeah, unturned, yeah, after blowing all the power out and almost blowing the generator out of Port Colbert. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that was, we had fun at that street. Oh, that, that, was, that was great, great man. I loved every minute of it. Yeah, so it, it was almost like they were calling it port stock in the paper. That's right. We go back and look in our scrapbooks or whatever. It That's was a right. Big I remember do. that. I mean, there was, there was, maybe they figured between two or 3,000 people, but it, it might as well have been 20,000 because, I mean, they're, they're on West Street. I mean, it was just so jammed and crazy that it looked like literally thousands of people and it was oh. actually but not not as as big as Woodstock but they were calling it Portstock because when they first hired us they said well you got a little bit of a following and you know we'll get you guys out there so they figured we're going to get a few hundred people uh, there yep. when it snowballed and it went nuts and it, everybody that we knew they all came out Had there a good time and I still run into people that were there at the street dance and I think I was telling you last weekend I was out shopping 
and I get a little tap on my back, and the guy says, hey, you're shopping. Don't you have your roadies to do that for you? Oh, and I say, yeah, well, right they didn't carry my guitars in my ass, but i got to buy my own apples, right? That's right, So, yeah, so yeah. he says, you, you don't remember me, <laughs> he says, but I was helping you guys with all your equipment at, at, the, at the street dance. Thank God he wasn't talking to you when you were playing with the nuts or something. Yeah, no, I wasn't grabbing my nuts, I was grabbing apples. <laughs> So, anyways, so it's a yeah, joke yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So he, he come out of the woodwork. So there again. So there's a lot of people that that remember that, and uh, and you know even just a short time before that, somebody else uh, contacted me and said, "Hey, remember me, da 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 da. I remember you guys from the street dance and, and everything else." So so I guess we affected a lot of people because I've had actually guys come up to me and say, "Well, after I seen you guys, I, I wanted to play," and we figured, "Hey, that that's a real rock band." Or so they they were really inspired between that and us playing up at the park and some of the bigger shows we did. Uh, we did inspire a lot of guys who said, hey, we want to be rock guys, like King of the Attic. I mean, we were superstars, but I mean, to them, they really looked up uh, to us. Said, yeah, we want to be in a good. real band and, and play some heavy kind of crazy stuff, right? So we did, we did inspire a lot of people. So from time to time, you know, I get people kind of reminiscing over that. So yeah, so anyways, we progressed to, to, to that. Um, um, at, then at that time, uh, you had to move out of there and we ended up going. Yeah, I, I left and I, I left and I had to go on an adventure for a while. So I was gone for a while. So you guys, uh, I remember this. You guys uh, brought uh, brought Bruno in. Yeah. Bruno DiCipio. Yeah. So my, 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 my spider bandmate that, there we, go. that we had that started circle, up with. Yeah. He had played in various bands, you know, through the years. And, and, and we were always good friends, but we, he was always either playing with somebody else. So anyways, Br Bruno came back into it. It was me, Bruno, and Joe. Uh, Bruno knew Joe because we used to hang around That's right. like, Perfect. All, all this time. So even though yeah. he hadn't been playing with us, uh, you know, we knew Joe from the, yeah, back yeah. From the Spider days or whatever. So it was almost like a like a, an upgraded uh, heavy rock version of, of the Spiders, except we could actually play something now. But it, it was fun anyway. So anyways, Bruno joined the lineup. And then, of course, uh, we got into our 80s stint there where we did a lot more recording. Um, you know, And we had, we had a, quite a few things on the go. We did a lot of big shows. Uh, and that was probably the... the one of the pinnacles over the years because that plateau in, in the 80s uh, we were just we were kind of revolving back around again and it was almost like prime time for us people say hey you know we, we like all those big martial amps and we, and we like that hair and, and, and you know put on your parachute pants and do your thing they, they were all into it yeah, yeah, so there you go yeah so basically we kind of found our niche again so going from the, 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 again, the stadium rock and the arena rock and, and, and playing these bigger venues, some of the bars were getting bigger at that time and say, well, at, you actually could go and play a bar where all the big bands were playing. So there was a place for us again. Yeah. So uh, other than just being uh, kind of framed to being outside or whatever, because we just like to do bigger shows and we we're just kind of just too big for, for the inside, uh, we finally were reaching some, some bigger hotels or clubs or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, the 80s was good for us. And yeah. a lot of bands at that time. So basically that's what we kind of developed um, going forward into kind of the king of the attic um, that, that you see here. Like I said, you know, with the Marshall stacks and, and all kinds of multiple systems. We've always been known for having big state-of-the-art systems and always kind of being ahead of our time. Even in, in the 70s when we had first started off, we, we always had kind of a unique um, approach to the sound and and look and that's why people wanted to work with us and you remember we, we had scads of equipment because guys always wanted to try stuff out and so we would kind of put all these a lot different, of equipment. different innovations together I mean it's fairly commonplace now but back then they, they just weren't splitting up the sound the, the, the way that we had started to very early on and even playing with multiple lamps or whatever but there, there wasn't that many people doing it of course you know all the big superstars Jimmy Page and all they finally got, got into it but it, it took a long time for basically uh, regular uh, bands to kind of proliferate to the point to say, well, you know, you, you need multiple amps and you need different yes. type of things if you want to get that, that bigger, 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 bigger sound there. and you need a sound system that's capable of, of, of moving sounds around with the matrix and creating a monitor mix that's going to allow you to hear what you need to hear when you get big drums, mic and, and things that are going on. So, uh, but we started a very early time even back in that stage there when we were doing the street dance and doing whatever. I mean, they looked upon us because we actually brought all the equipment there. That was all new to them, all this kind of lighting and everything. Yeah, everything. We supplied everything there. So they said, well, they couldn't even have done their, you know, their dancers and, and their stuff that they had going on because had we, no had PA, we had all the lights. Know, lights. So basically we had lights, we had PA, we, we had everything. So it was the first time I think that they had actually got involved with saying, well, 
you know, you could bring a big system in and, and be able to actually, you know, turn it, turn it into an event. So I'm really proud of that because we, we kind of pioneered that. But anyway, we proliferated through the years in the 80s and the 90s and various people coming in and out again. Um, Gary Kelba, Garthy, I mean, he was with us back, like I said, when we were doing the, the street dance. Uh, and when we were out in Wellingport, we held some big shows in, 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 the, uh, in the community center there, and we did a bunch of big, big events. Uh, and he was our roadie and our friend because he was actually friends with Joe, and, yes. and, and, and he worked with everybody. everybody so yeah. Gary became an integral part of the band yeah. uh, a, a, as a friend. He was young too. And he was young. I mean, he was just a kid, eh? and yeah. he had his band, and he used to help us out. We had a few I know, friends who had bands, so we were, he was fabulous. He had a bunch of people help us get some stuff around. So more or less, started off as a real good friend and a good fan, and uh, he played drums or whatever. We jammed once in a while, but we already had a drummer or whatever. So he was just friends of the band, but he really liked the band, and of course, he turned out to be a. Uh, you know, our mainstay later. So later, when, when Joe's life changed again, and, and you know he had, he had to do some some other things, and he wasn't able to play anymore. Well, then Gary uh, came into the lineup. In between times, you moved to Hamilton. You had some things going on with your life. So then Bruno came back into the band. So as I say, then we had Bruno and Garfi playing drums, and myself, and then that also proliferated through um, as part part of the 80s. Yeah. Uh, then. Uh, Gary had something else there. Again, you got to remember, people are working jobs with that lives. And so, I mean, his situation changed. Uh, and then Dave Chu uh, came into the band. Yes, and that's Dave. when we did our six-pack to go and, 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 and out at Muffins and all the big shows that we were doing out in Crystal Beach. Um, uh, so, basically, Dave came into the band. And that's uh, actually about the time that we moved into this building was about the very early 80s. And me, Dave, and Bruno um, started in this downstairs building, in down, downstairs in the back, but basically the same building. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, so we went quite some time, and then Dave's situation changed, and he had to move away. Garfi's situation changed, and Garfi was back again. So there again, <laughs> me, Garfi, and Bruno again, and we're, we're back at it again. There we so, go. So there you go. So then there's a short it's a good thing, though. Yeah, it's a good thing. Every, like I said, everybody revolved around, so I mean, we're all good friends, and so right. basically it didn't take much to integrate somebody in, and everybody was welcome. So we just figured, hey, we're all good friends. Whoever can play, can right. play, and if not, you know, come that's, and hang out with that's us. That's right. So, uh, so that, that went uh, uh, obviously several years or whatever. Then uh, in, in between times, uh, we experimented around because uh, during the period of the early 2000s, uh, we had a real big success with our uh, Down the Wire um, CD and uh, we got press release actually in the paper because it went over so well. And uh, even at the show, uh, you know, we had to go midway home and get another uh, couple cases of uh, CDs. We sold uh, several hundred right, right from the get-go before it actually was out. And uh, that moved quite well for us. Um, my brother-in-law, Gordy Shipperbottom, uh, joined the lineup uh, about mid-2000s. He was singing in a Creed band and uh, he had an Eddie better type of voice. And we tried that out for a while and uh, we ended up doing um, you know, some several big shows with that too, uh, live at Larry's and we recorded that live um, CD there and that is part of our portfolio of CDs and whatnot and it went over really well. Um, he was only with us a, a short time. Um, there again, people cycle in and out, we've got things to do and whatever. So we were back to the man at that point. Um, and then we talked with both uh, Joe and Shaughnessy uh, who had a short stint with us, uh, and then that led to uh, when Jerry Lamont came on board, and of course he was in the lineup uh, until uh, Gary had passed away, and then King of the Attic moved on to let go of his now, 2018, and he had to do before that, but it was in this era, and that's where we are with the present lineup. I hear people outside here interfering with our interview here. Um, so, yeah, so he was uh, our last bass player before um, you decided to come back. So we were kind of on a hiatus, uh, and as you know, you and I were playing with the uh, Barstool Rednecks, and we kind of had a head yeah. of country thing going on. Yeah, at, at, yeah. yeah. At the same time as King of the Attic. So it was fun. Yeah, so basically we had both things going on. Uh, and then unfortunately with, with um, Gary, um, he, he passed away of a, of a heart attack, heart failure. And uh, so 
I sad, didn't, sad day, sad, friend. Sad day, man, because, I mean, he was he was a good friend. Heart and soul was like, of his was like, band. He was like a, a brother to me. He really was, and I was like a brother to him. We just really had a connection. And he was the and was heart band, and soul yeah. of this band. Oh, yeah. Band, band was good, but as a friend and, and, and a human being yeah. or whatever, we were really connected. But geez, as a drummer, we, we did a lot of things. And there's, this, there's this kit back there. We'll get into that um, <clears throat> sometime. But basically, um, so looking around again, um, Barstool Rednecks, we were doing pretty good, but I think we were probably just a little too heavy for our own good, which happens when you bring me on board. No, really. <laughs> I warned you. Hey, I said hey, this hey, sooner hey, later. Hey, man, you, know? you guys yeah. are a little yeah. too we're, heavy. We're going to blow the windows out a little too many times. You sure your country? Yeah, we're out your we're no. out welcome. But actually, we, we did well. We didn't wear, we didn't actually wear out our welcome. Yeah, we I'm played some gigs. Trust over. me, we did. Yeah, we, we know really we're good. Did. But anyways, um, we uh, I, I was out of, out of a drummer. And the Barstool Redneck, that we were having fun with it, but Ian, um, which he's our illustrious cameraman at, at the moment, <laughs> play, playing it with us in the Barstool Rednecks, uh, he's been a fan of King of the Attic for quite some time, and he said, well then, you know, we're doing heavy stuff, and we're doing some of your material, and we've got all this going on. Well, why don't we just, you know, resurrect King of the Attic and keep it going? So that that's great with me. I mean, he's a great drummer, and he's heavy duty, and, and he knows us uh, for all that time. So basically, that's how we came to have the um, the lineup that we have now, of course, with, with Rick and Ian. And that's been King of the Attic, I think, for going on maybe three years, maybe even almost four years. Almost. Now, now. time flies. It just seems like a few years. but And it's taken us a while to um, develop, um, you know, to the point that we're at now. But uh, there again, all, all these things take time. I mean, we're all good friends and we've got good chemistry. But eventually, when you get it to where it's really like in the pocket and it's really solid I, uh, over the last year or so, I think we've, there again, we've, we're back to the to the plateau or the level of, of uh, you know music that uh, King of the Attic has always tried to aspire to, and maybe even more so. So I'm very happy with you guys right on, in the man. lineup, and I think basically we're probably the best. Where's that thousand dollar bonus you promised? It's Russell. in the mail. The checks in the mail, man. There's no problem. The checks are in the mail. Did you hear that? Yeah, the checks are in the mail. The check yeah. is in the mail. Yeah. I've heard that a few times. Yeah. Man. So okay. anyway. You, you you keep eye for your check in the yeah, mail. Yeah, I mean it may take a little time. I'm you know, still I, looking. Yeah, I got no control over the postal <laughs> service, so you know I sent them out quite some time ago. Yeah. If you didn't get them from the China, whole, better talk to the postmaster general or somebody. I don't have checks in the mail. But anyway, so we got the lineup that we have now, and of course it, it's great. So basically, I look forward. I love to, it. To to you know progressing on and we got a lot of things that I know I do. know we, Ian loves it yeah we're doing all our videos and doing all our stuff and we got a lot more stuff coming so you, you watch for us and um, we're going to continue on with some more material so basically we're going to uh, progress now probably to what we would consider to be almost like a rig rundown sort of thing because people are always asking us basically why don't you show us a little more detail on you know on some of your stuff and sure. Yeah. Let's so do that. Th that's that's good with me. So I think we'll, we can progress on. Of course, we got a nice big studio going on here, and people yeah, you ask want, me. You want to take a bit of a break? Yeah, we'll take a bit of a break, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll show you a few things. But we're gonna, we're going to do a real in depth. Um, portion probably a little bit later on we get real close to things and kind of see what's going on for all you aficionados who, who really want to see the nitty-gritty that's a big word for me but basically we're, we're gonna get it we'll get into it all uh, for anybody that's interested in seeing it because there again some people are aware of what we use but basically somebody might just want to see like what's going on so that's all, man. We'll, we'll take a break and we'll go yep. back to the next little uh, uh, segment if you want to call it that's that right. and we'll show you a, a few things and we'll go from there so Stay tuned. Yeah. On Rock Talk with Rick. <laughs> uh, probably now Chris, too. He's trying to, yeah, trying trying to, to steal <laughs> Rock Talk with Rick and Chris. Chris see, there yeah. it is. I knew something was going go. on. Oh. See you in a bit. Anyways, ciao. Hey, so how's everybody doing? Welcome back. We're going to hear Chris is here. Uh, and uh, now we're going to introduce uh, Mr. Ian Bakes. Came into King people. of the Attic. Uh, so we're going to talk to three of us about how the band's doing, what the band's doing, uh, all that kind of stuff. So let's see what's up. The latest. The latest. The latest That's king right. of the attic. The latest king of the attic. The last chapter. The last chapter. So basically the last time we left off was, I, <coughs> probably, was probably just uh, 
after the passing of Johnny, right? Yeah, I think that's where we left off. Pretty well, that's where we that left off. That's right. Yeah. And that's uh, where we left off. And then after after that, um, I'm not sure you're going to have to help me here. Was Ben dead for a little bit? No, actually, actually we went. It, it, was, it was coincided with we the Barstool Rednecks. So yeah, basically, yeah, it, was right. still, it was still kind of hanging in there. Uh, basically, it was uh, yeah, thriving, surviving, just, just hanging in parallel with, uh, with what we were doing with the Barstool Rednecks. But yeah, yeah. It, was, it was still kind of And, uh, and then our singer kind of had a, an illness or two and had to drop out. And that kind of went sideways. Barstool Rednecks. Barstool Rednecks, yes. And uh, so then uh, we kind of all chatted and said, well, we might as well keep the king alive. <laughs> Long live the king. Long live the king. Keep By the way, which one's king? <laughs> <laughs> I may not be king, but which one's king? <laughs> and this band's been going since <laughs> what? What's up? Like, you know, we'll that date again. like what we we're talking about, 76? 76, 1976. Oh, the, you know, the band is, what, 43 years old? I don't know, myself. Like, okay, they're yeah, 43 so. years old. Oh, so, and then Ian came in right after all this, right? And we did some revamping and a few other things. Uh, tell us your story. It's pretty interesting about the band. How oh, oh, you got, how oh, you found uh, about King and Yannick? reiterate from a couple episodes ago um, from the uh, street dance I was one of them young and I am the baby of fans. Street, street dance in Fort Colburn in 1981 if you're yeah. talking yes uh, old we probably 15, 14 yeah, okay, right well, same age as the Lidsville Rats. Yeah, except I Except you didn't have a bike. Was, you didn't have a bicycle didn't live sitting on the street. You didn't have a bicycle. <laughs> Couldn't afford a bike. Yeah. So go ahead. And, uh, yeah, man, rock and roll kicked my ass. Oh, can I say that? Sure. Yeah, it's our video. We can do what we want. Right on. Uh, and I, I wanted to rock and roll from then on. I, I like just going into high school, got in the band, started playing drums. 30, 40 years later, here I am, boys. With the kings. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. It blows my mind. Uh, it blows my mind. Yeah, who thought? Who would have thought? When you seen these rock guys, as we were talking about, saying, geez, I'd like to do that, but someday it was going to Generational right? influences oh, yeah. here, people. Yep. Yep. No, but, that's no lie. You know, either, man. Uh, and, and, that, and that's great, though, you know, because, you know, the band's been going that long, and, you know... In the years before, I remember we played a lot of gigs. We don't play that many gigs anymore, only because there's not a lot of places to play, right? We're the size caliber. We're the size of what we're trying to do, yeah, but yeah. we're busy recording in the studio, right, Chris? Oh, well, we sure are. So we're always, always messing with something. Video. Videos. We're into the next Everything. millennium now with all the new stuff. We're, we're doing. We're pretty all... hip for old guys. That's right. Old dinosaurs <laughs> that know how to push a button on a computer. We're doing pretty good. And that's it, man. You know, it's you know. Uh, it's it's been uh, it's been uh, it's been an experience for me, you know, coming and going a few times in the band. But it's all been it's all been great because the original material is, is fabulous. You know, some of this stuff you got to remember was written in the seventies, and you try to bring that forward forty three years. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, you it's know, pretty tough on the body. <laughs> it's pretty strenuous. Hey? But you, 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 you don't guys. dare lose where you are because you're screwed. <laughs> and these older guys that are out there that have been doing it for, you know, 40, 50 years out there chopping along, beating the grind, playing every hole yeah, just to keep around going. Yeah, just to be a musician. Yeah. You know what we're talking about. You know, you guys have been out there. You've done that. And I praise all these musicians that go out there and want to do it every week. But anyway, so we're on to different things and upward. Upwards. Up rock and roll. Upward. Yep. yep. So yeah, we got a couple more videos in the works. Uh, going to work on some more material to bring to the people. And sure. Got a, got a couple toasting in the oven. We just haven't got around to finish them up. That's right. It'll be pretty good. And uh, yeah, we'll continue on. Like, like you said, we're kind of uh, revamping it for this generation. You still got to kind of stay with tradition. It's still... Um, 
make it sound like King of the Attic, but make it relevant. And most of it is. I mean, look at Rock Talk. I mean, that's right. When I wrote that in '86, we thought, "Well, you're going to use that for 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 a theme song, and then you're going to have a show, and that's we're going exactly. to be sitting here nope. talking about the good good old days." That many years later, I mean, that's we, right. we wrote it about basically Rock Talk, the rock scene, talk, talking that's, about bands. Yeah, that's maybe why I loved it so maybe much. Maybe get in the car, maybe hang out. It's 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 basically what the rock scene is all about. I mean, everybody wants to be a rock star and get a jet. We never quite made getting jets, but still. <laughs> You, you want to be in with the crowd, right? So it's relevant, but it's funny because back then, like I said, when you wrote these songs, you never thought you were going to be singing them this many years later, trying to make them relevant. But but most of them fit, and they're pretty good. Uh, but anyway, so we, we've tried to tailor everything um, to today's kind of a crowd, and, and and most of it works. So for us, you know, we're having a lot of fun with it, and we keep experimenting with the sound and, and, br and bringing it forward. But uh, uh, we find uh, for some of it, we actually backstep. Uh, a little bit, and you kind of reach the the little niche where the 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 sound of the music and the way you play it coincides with what you're doing, and so you just can't come out and be a crunch, be a heavy metal band because it really doesn't fit. Although it, yeah. it, it's got that heavier, a little bit more uh, attack to it these days, a little bit more crunch going as as we've been finding. Oh, we we've, we've been dialing some of that back and, and basically get a little a little bit more of, of that open airy sound, which is and it seems to work for us. So we've tried yeah. some experiments. Yeah. Some of our early videos are are fairly crunchy in nature and they're pretty good. But w when we look at them, they just got got the edge that just doesn't quite go. So it we're just revamped. yeah we're, we're again re revamped. So like I said, <laughs> the the technology is upscaled. And, and we kind of found our niche again, so we're trying to make it, you know, sound like today to, to the best of our ability and still stay true to what we're playing. So, and it's and it's working out. So we're hoping everybody's enjoying it, and the feedback is good. People are saying, hey, you know, we, we're still enjoying it. So the old King of the Attic fans uh, from way back in the old days are saying, hey, 70s we're, we're and good. 80s. And people that come up with it is good. People our, our age is good. So, so for us, uh, the shows that we've been doing, you know, the last uh, few years or whatever, been very responsive. The people have been uh, really uh, up, up to what we're doing, and put it that way. So basically, it keeps you going on. So it's been working all good for us. So, I, so I'm happy, and I'd like to keep everybody happy. We've got to be happy ourselves first, but it's, it's always nice to I have, can get as happy, man. All right. You can get as happy. <laughs> After this, we're going to get real happy. Everybody's going to get real happy. Okay, so happy, happy, happy. That's right. So anyway, so yeah, we're up to date pretty much with everything that we wanted to uh, to tell you. And uh, through this epilogue or, or episodes, if you want to call it that, we um, are going to bring forth a few little uh, pictures and videos and things that are going to kind of weave in and out. So if you've been watching it, you've been you're seeing it. So as we're talking about it, we're kind of planning Over the on, years. Yeah, bring bring some people. of the artifacts forward let, yep. and, and bring bring in some of the, the things you know to light there, just to to kind of show you everything that's been going on. Yeah. Some of the older pictures and a few a few things that we awesome. talked about. So a, a, as you've been watching now, we've been trying to insert some of those. Uh, background things in and all the old history bringing in. We, we could be here for an, an awful long time, but we, we try to keep it. Hopefully it's in, interesting. We brought a lot of stuff forward, pictures and documents of things that people like to see. So we've integrated all that in, and all I can say is I hope you really enjoy it. So we're going to kind of move along. Uh, yeah, no. Looking at the rig and like you've asked me and a few, we've had a lot of it's questions. Your show, take over. I'll just <laughs> well, hey, 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 what are you doing, buddy? Okay, you doing? Yeah, hey, I, think, I think you should say, yeah. well, Humble, tell us about your stuff now. So oh, well, yeah, go ahead. No, it, there we go. I got I'll no stuff. Got no stuff. No, I'm just joking. Anyway, right on, man. Tell us uh, what's happening. Well, well, we'll do a rundown. I guess of we'll our do rigs a, yeah, yeah, okay, show right off. Have some a little studio. bit of fun. We'll let you all people see what's happening here. There, you heard. And you know, it's available. You can bring it on. You can do recordings. You can do the whole nine yards videotaping. It's all here. Come and Just see. Just wanted us. to let you know. <laughs> well, when we're in between times and we got time, we like to, uh, you know. We love help rock people and roll. We love to do it. So, yeah. and we got, we definitely got the ways and means. So basically, as as you'll see from some of the videos, we got lots of seating for uh, for for private venues to bring yeah. your your. I guess we'll in. show that down. And the we'll, road, we'll show that a little bit. And yeah. we'll, they've seen it a little quick little run through yeah. at the intro. Gonna so you kind of see luck. we got seating. So we've got obviously got a big full size concert stage, and, and we got enough seating to bring in, like I said, a few private uh, people, 30, 40 people, you know, to do your shoot. So people that are associated with there you. you go. So you right. got a little live crowd thing going on. We've obviously got the lighting that's 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 tailored to. Uh, to rock, and to, to rock and roll and yeah. to video. We've gone to great lengths with all temperature uh, controlled uh, lights and everything Absolutely. to give you the proper skin tones and all that sort of things like you and do for TV like production. Casper, yeah, Casper's so white, we got a special purple light for him to kind of make him look humanoid. 
the, it doesn't the, matter, man. The zombie. So yeah, we've got all that. So yeah, c come and see us, and we'll we'll work something out. Anyway, we'll work, we'll do a quick little rundown. Just show some of the people that've been asking us. Like, oh, hey, hey, show us a little bit of your gear there. We'll get into it, uh, you know, a, a little bit, and just kind yeah. of show everybody around a little okay. bit. And I know you kind of want to show everybody the kit, the way that we've uh, kind of brought brought uh, it forward. Garpy's uh, drum kit. kit. Yeah. That's at Stable right. King of the Attic, and yeah. um, very His lovely very, wife Lisa. She. Uh, yeah. Kind of donated to the project. Gotta love it, man. It's it's nostalgic. There's there's it's no getting over that. It's it's we'll, we'll show you that in another thing coming up, uh, all about what's in here, what gear we're using, what what Chris is using at the board and stuff like that, and all that sort of well, stuff. We'll do a stage rundown. I yeah, guess. we'll do a stage right rundown here. for now. Yeah. We'll get to the yeah. studio stuff a bit later. Yeah, Some good. of the aficionados yeah. kind of yeah. want to see what's here if they want to yeah. come and sure. record and they want to do something. They kind of want to know what we got sure. cooking there. So we'll get to all a bit later. Yeah. Just do a quick little rundown. So yeah, I guess perfect. maybe we'll, we'll fade out, as we Take say, fade break. to black, as we say in the business. Look, he's, and he's leading you again. And then, so, I know. <laughs> so take this home. I know. Take this home, brother. Hey, I'm getting pissed off now. Take this home. Anyway. <laughs> we'll be back in a bit with Rock Talk with Rick, hanging out with Chris and Ian from King of the Attic. And I'll be here, so man. Peace out. Right back. <laughs>